Um, so I'll be starting off first with our basic needs section. And so for cost of living, it's an important factor impacting access to basic needs. And there are many metrics used to look at this cost. One important metric is the federal poverty level, a national guideline used to determine eligibility for programs and services rather than a metric for poverty. Eligibility for programs often uses 185% of the federal poverty level as a guideline rather than the actual federal poverty level. Another metric is the living wage calculator we use from MIT, which produces an estimate for every state in the country of wages needed to meet a household's basic needs. This doesn't include savings for or funds for savings, emergency expenses, or expenses um, like meals out. And a family of four in Vermont would need an annual income of about $104,000 to meet those basic needs. So this graph here shows the comparison between those metrics, and you can see that the median household income does not meet the living wage we have here let alone the earnings from two adults that are making minimum wage or families receiving the maximum reach up benefits. It's also important to acknowledge that the living wage calculator does not account for inflation in the past year. So median family income did rise about $5,800 between 2021 and 2022 to about $96,000. But after adjusting for inflation, median family income actually fell by 1.5%, which means that families had less buying power in 2022 than they had in previous years. All right. Another important highlight in the past years around housing and around housing, including new concerns and longstanding challenges. There are many challenges with both availability and affordability of housing in the state. Of households in Vermont, 47% of Vermont households who rent and 29.8% um, of households who own report paying more than 30% of their income towards rent or a mortgage. In addition, Vermont's rental vacancy rate of 3.5% was the third lowest in the country. So finding any rental, let alone an affordable and desirable rental can be challenging for families here. While homeownership provides a path to building financial assets for families and gives children a secure, stable housing situation, given a low homeowner vacancy rate of 1% paired with high interest rates, many Vermont families are finding homeownership increasingly difficult. When we look at those who are unhoused, the impacts can be significant. The trauma of any period of homelessness, even short term, can have a major effect on future development. Children who experience homelessness may have significantly higher rates of emotional, behavioral, and both long-term and immediate health problems. Like metrics for cost of living, there are multiple ways of defining homelessness and housing insecurity. The McKinney-Vento Homelessness Assistance Act defines homelessness as lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence. Children and families meeting this definition are entitled to a number of services, resources, and supports from the local education agency. And as you can see here, there's been a striking increase in the number of homelessness for children under nine enrolled in school. From, 20, from 226 in the 2018-2019 school year to 457 in the 2022-2023 school year. Similarly, in January of 2023, point in time count of those experiencing homelessness shows the number of people in households with children increased by 85% from pre-pandemic levels from 629 in 2019 to 1,166 in 2023. 